Hi, my name is Melissa Weisenfels, Executive Director here at Mark Inc. Ministries. Thank you so very much for your continued support of the Ask Dr. Better series. The following is not meant to substitute professional counseling, but instead is designed to extract biblical principles around the questions being asked. We encourage you to seek professional help if needed. Hi, I'm Dr. Chuck Betters. Someone wrote to me this, I listen to a lot of different pastors and feel like there are basically two main themes that I hear. They're either preaching the gospel through the lens that we need to be fighting against our sin, or they are preaching to ultimately fight for finding joy in all things. One feels like a finger pointer, the other like a cheerleader. Your videos seem to be very direct. So which is, which is it? Fight, for, fight our sin or fight for joy? Well, it's both. It's obviously to fight for uh, joy is to fight against our sin. There is great joy in resisting the evil one. The word for joy in scripture is the word car, C-H-A-R. It just means joy, but the root of that word car is also the root for the word grace, which is also the root of a word that speaks of our spiritual gifts, charismata. So let's put that all together. To have joy is to exercise our gifts and to exercise our gifts is to have great joy. There ought to be joy in the exercise of our spiritual gifts, but all of it is of grace. God gives us those gifts to resist evil. He gives us those gifts to experience great joy. So it's not one or the other, it's both and. We are to fight our sin. It is a warfare. Uh, in fact, when we go to the book of James chapter four, beginning with, uh, with verse six, it says that God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Now, how do we do that? To submit yourself to God, how do we submit ourselves to God? He then explains in the next verse, resist the devil, that's number one, resist evil, resist the temptations, and he will flee from you. Well, how do you resist the temptations? How do you fight the devil? How do you fight against evil? He tells us in the next verse, draw near to God, he will draw near to you. So the closer we grow in our relationship to God, and the more Satan sees the God of the Bible in us, the more he cowers away because fundamentally Satan is a bully. And when he sees the strength of the Lord is our strength, he backs away. We resist the devil by drawing near to God. Well, how do we do that? Well, he tells us in the next verse, he says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. In other words, repent of sin. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. The actions that we do, that's the cleansing and the thought processes that go into it. That's the heart issue that we have. So cleanse your hands, you sinners, purify your hearts, you double-minded, be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning. Let your joy to gloom, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. Now you have bookends in this passage of scripture. The first bookend over here says that God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Well, what does it mean that God resists the proud? The word resist there means to treat as an enemy. That you actually become an enemy of God when you are unwilling to listen to his voice at work in you. When you're unwilling to repent and to cleanse your heart and to cleanse your hands and to resist the devil and to draw an eye unto God. That is an act of pride. And God says, when you act that way, I will resist you. I will treat you as an enemy but he gives grace. There's that word charis again. He gives grace, that's that word joy. He gives grace, that's that word spiritual gift. He gives joy, he gives grace. He gives gifts to those who are willing to humble themselves. That's the bookend over here. At the end of the passage, he, he closes it this way. He says, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. That is that spirit of worship that we get when we understand that God has done a work in us. 
He is working in, in our souls in a way that maybe is a little painful at times, but nonetheless, it is the Spirit of God working in us to convict us of sin, to convict us of righteousness, to draw us near to God. As we study the scriptures, as we pray, we draw nigh unto God, Satan then begins to flee. And when Satan begins to flee, we find strength. The strength of the Lord becomes more and more evident in our lives. So to answer your question, it says one feels like a finger pointer, the other like a cheerleader. That's exactly what the way it's supposed to be. There is a sense in which the Holy Spirit will point the fingers so that we will repent. And he is the one who becomes our cheerleader. In fact, that's one word that's used of the Holy Spirit is our advocate. He pleads our case before God. He becomes our cheerleader to gain victories for us over those temptations that draw us into the pit of despair. I hope this helps.